Hi friends. So this is Derry Walls, chapter 7, final chapter, short, and the theme is justice. The judge looked over his glasses as the prosecution summed up his case. He was still insisting that there was no doubt that in principle the toy Luger had been used as a replica firearm and the verdict of the jury should reflect that. Really Mr Reynolds, we've heard this argument enough. The act is very clear on the matter and I would ask the jury to remember that. If you turn to page 7 of your document file you will see the act is very clear in the definition of a replica firearm. Now have you anything more to add Mr Reynolds? The judge had heard enough. The prosecutor shook his head with a look of distaste for the judge that did not go unnoticed. The, jury, the judge gave the jury a few moments to consult the 1968 Firearms Act, the key part of which was as follows. An imitation firearm will be treated as a firearm to which Section 1 Firearms Act 1968 applies if 1. It has the appearance of such a weapon and 2. It can be readily convertible into a weapon from which a shot, bullet or other missile can be discharged. Section 1, 1 and 2, Firearms Act 1968. The defence team had proven beyond all doubt that the toy Luger brought a few years earlier over the counter of a Woolworths store was totally unable to be converted to fire anything at all. The judge asked the jury to weigh up all the facts with care, the testimony of the two people who had been at the centre of the drama with the accused as well as the actual evidence, rather than speculation, hearsay and newspaper talk. Patrick gave Wesley a friendly smile which was not rejected and he left the courtroom to get something to eat. He called to Sheila to join him and they decided to eat in Austin's, the very place of the drama. What do you think will happen Patrick? I really am not sure, Sheila, but the prosecution brought the wrong charges, I think. There's no firearms charge to face, really, and in trying to make that stick, they've made a mess of things. You gave him a glowing testimony in there. Are you not going to get some stick for that? I already have, the Republican laughed, but then looked more serious. He stroked his chin. Wesley made me think. My life could have ceased up here in this restaurant, and I would have been remembered as what? The man who shot a policeman in cold blood in his bed? She, I was young, hot-headed and convinced of the rightness of the cause. But there's been more than enough killing. We all have to work for peace. And you've done a great job on that score. If the cops had found you when you were removing that weapon, you would have been in jail yourself, maybe. The way I see it, Patrick, the tide flows in out of lock foil and the river flows into it. Endlessly clearing things away and keeping the waters fresh. Living in the past is like living in the mud. When I dropped that gun and the bullets into the water I was throwing the history out. Not pretending it didn't happen, but refusing to allow it to dictate the present. You put that nicely. You should be writing for a living. Jerry's wrote about you. I hear he's trying to persuade you to consider it and he says he'll help you. Oh, he has. They try to persuade me to go and work at the Derry Journal. When they returned to the courtroom, the rumour was that the jury would soon come and give a verdict. The judge returned and the crowded courtroom stood up and sat down and time froze as all awaited the judgment. The foreman of the jury announced the decision as being unanimously not guilty on the firearms charge, but guilty as far as a few public order charges were concerned. Sentencing took just a few minutes. The judge took time to assess the way the siege had been handled. I have to say the thing that bothers me the most about this matter is the way it got completely out of hand because the PSNI with all its years of experience failed to deal with a man and a toy gun. Mr Crockett, as a man of previous excellent character and seemingly good motive, I sentence you to six months in jail suspended and an order that you're bound over to keep the peace for 12 months. In other words, Wesley Crockett was a free man. 
but his real freedom was here in his heart. He'd been doing a lot of thinking about the man that he'd wanted to kill. Patrick had not hesitated to come to the place where he knew he might die, but he'd sought to get others free and unharmed. Then the two of them had talked a lot, understood each other better, each knowing that if they'd lived in each other's lives, they may have taken similar paths to each other. They made their way from the courthouse, both Wesley and Patrick insisting that Sheila join them again, and Jerry took photos on the top of Terry, Terry Walls. Two men who had every reason to hate each other talking in a civil way and wanting something better for all the people. Sheila had another water illustration for them. She said that in the past Patrick had been like water that was boiling and he would burn whatever stood between him and complete Irish freedom. Whereas for decades Wesley had been cold and numb like the water that's so cold it's painful to the touch. Once the two of them met and talked and struggled to understand each other, they both became one, like water that's pleasant to the touch, warm but not so as to burn. As they talked, a man came, walked along the footpath at the top of the wall toward them. He approached them with a smile and Sheila recognised him. This was a middle-aged man, one of Jehovah's Witnesses, that had watched her action on the peace bridge, releasing the gun and the bullets into the water. He'd given her leaflets about world peace. She introduced him to her three friends and he left happily as they all took the magazines he was offering them, pointing to a future peace such as had never existed in all the time that Derry had been dominated by its walls. As he walked away he gave thought to a verse he loved in the Bible. It was Psalm 46 verse 9. He is bringing to an end, he is bringing an end to the wars throughout the earth. He breaks the bow and shatters the spear. He burns the military wagons with fire. Well, we can look forward to that, can't we, my friends? In the meantime, we can share the good things we know and be at peace with one another and be at peace with others as we have opportunity as far as it depends on us. It's good for us to wish others peace and when we see this trouble in the earth, it's good for us to long to peace. One thing we know is that all men are brothers. If only everybody would realise that. Love and peace to you. Thank you for listening to this story to the end. And I have some more to share. And some more to write. So I hope you'll keep listening. Bye for now. Love and peace from Kate and me. Bye bye.